So, I got outside. I set my alarm clock for 4 a.m. and met my buddy at an empty beach. If we're playing a game of free word association, I'd assume a common word for fishing would be boring. For me, it's anything but. Even at home, I'm always watching the weather for a window where the swell and the wind will be kind. Once on the beach, I'm watching the waves for that brief lull so I can launch myself and my gear safely through the surf. Appropriately evocative, a failed launch is known as a yard sale. The surf cycle is usually a little bit longer than my attention span, so that not so obvious moment can sneak up. And then I just go. I'm working to build momentum, so I'm paddling as hard as I can to break through that first wave. At this point, I'm somewhere between damp and completely soaked in 60 degree water. But it doesn't really matter, because my heart's pounding, and my adrenaline's up, and I'm getting ready to watch one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen. So yeah, let's go on an adventure. Let's make outdoor content. I promise this won't be too much of a fishing show, but I do kind of want to show you how the fish sausage is made. Wait a second. Is there fish sausage? Oh. It, either way, I'm not making fish sausage. On this trip, I caught my first sculpin and decided to fry it whole with a new recipe. For a side, I'm making a yellow vegetable curry as well. I promise I'll get you back to my kitchen quickly for a catch and cook of whole deep fried sculpin and rockfish. So here we go. Before we get going, I wanted to talk about something really amazing that happened on this trip. Basically, we got out to our fishing grounds and found ourselves completely surrounded by literally hundreds of dolphins passing through, often coming within a few feet of the kayak and with a bunch of sea lions in tow. It was one of the most phenomenal things I've ever seen, and it really just kind of blew me away. So fishing. It starts with pulling out all of the carefully stowed gear, tying up all of your rigs. From there, we stop in the kelp forest and try to catch live bait. We keep them in an aerated tank as they're kind of the gold standard for finding a lot of the fish that we're most seeking. We use artificial lures as a close approximation as well. We use topography and GPS to kind of scout locations before going out and keep track of them as we find them. The ocean can be a little bit of an underwater desert, so you're always looking for structure that supports these dense food chains. Generally speaking, once you find the structure, you find the fish. We also use sonar to find what we can't see on the maps and kind of carefully catalog our spots. All of this is with the intent of hopefully bringing home some food. So what did I bring home? Well, this is a lingcod. Man, do they captivate the imagination. Like undersea dragons with fang teeth, sometimes bright blue in color, they're extremely aggressive predators. This is a sculpin. You'll note that I'm not touching it. Those dorsal spines have a necrotic and painful venom that can swell your hand up to about twice its size if it breaks the skin. So yeah, scorpion fish. Because they make such great table fare, we almost always end up running deep for rockfish. Uh, these smaller ones are perfect for deep frying like we're gonna do today. Anyway, afternoon rolls around, the wind picks up, and it's time to go home. We stow all of our gear securely below deck, pick the window to return to shore. There's almost always a stealing of the self before approaching. Because the waves are forming behind you, it can be even more challenging than the launch. Once you approach the surf zone, you're fully committed. If you end up on a wave, you brace and hope for the best. Then comes the work. Depending on how much fish I caught, it's probably about 150 pounds worth of gear to haul up a flight of stairs or a steep cliffside, load it into the truck, and then make that long drive home. Once I'm home, it's unload the truck, bring everything into the yard, 
clean all the salt water off of all the gear, wait for the sun to dry all the gear, organize it, and put it away, care for the catch, and from there it's pretty much a race against the clock before passing out. Anyway, that's it for the catch. Now for the cook. I'm gonna start with my side. I'm making a really basic yellow curry with a whole bunch of various vegetables. Generally, you start by heating up some oil and adding curry powder, if that's what you're using, letting it kind of cook down a little bit, throwing in my onions, letting those brown. While that's happening, I'll go ahead and kind of peel some ginger and get rid of my chef's knife and use an actual paring knife. That's much better. Adding all my ingredients in with a can of coconut milk and pretty much just leaving that to simmer for a bit. On to the fish prep. I'll spare you the gutting and scaling, but once I'm past that, I generally like to keep my fish wrapped in paper towels in a Ziploc bag on ice in the fridge. From there, I really just want to make sure that everything is really dry. Um, when you're deep frying, any extra moisture can be downright explosive. As I mentioned, I've already removed the scales. Now I'm just going to score the skin lightly, just to kind of increase surface area, help it cook a little bit more evenly. Because my household is currently hashtag keto, we're going to be dredging lightly in coconut flour before we fry. I also found accidentally that this just pairs amazingly with the sauce we're about to create. Let's talk about that sauce real quick. It undoubtedly makes the dish. You start with a base of fish sauce for this bomb of umami, salty, savory. From there, I'm adding sugar for sweetness, just kind of whisking that together. Lime juice for a sour, acidic component and a little bit of the zest for a slight bitter. Green onion for our aromatic. Thai chilies for Oh, so much heat. And cilantro. I'm not done talking about this sauce by a long shot, but for now, let's turn over to the stove where we're getting ready to deep fry the fish. So I'll be using a high smoke point oil. In this case, it's kind of a rendered uh, bacon lard that we just have on hand in the house, always. The wok is great because it creates a nice deep well for the oil uh, so that you don't have to put too much in. After knocking off any excess flour from the fish, we very carefully lower it into the hot oil and start the fry. I found that it's much easier to undercook than to overcook, so you really just want to let them go uh, until you get to a point where it's just an almost impossibly ardent golden brown. Uh, the crispier the skin, the better, uh, without really making the meat too tough. But yeah, 10, 15 minutes worth of frying. For the plating, we're going to peel and rough chop or julian some cucumber to rest the fish on. From there, it's just as simple as kind of coating with the sauce itself pretty generously. It's kind of difficult to effectively do justice to just how amazing this dish is. You've got the fat from the fry, the fresh caught fish itself. The sauce is this incredible, bold mix of salty, spicy, aromatic, and sweet with this balance of refreshing cucumber underneath. No question, 10 out of 10. From the lighting and the ingredients, you might note that I cooked this across two different settings. In our first setting, we didn't have all of our ingredients, so we used red onion and jalapeno instead of scallions and Thai chilies. With a slightly milder flavor in the peppers, it actually let the coconut flour really come through. It was a much more delicate and subtle flavor, and it turned out really good. I think it just speaks to how experimentation in the kitchen can lead to some really amazing results. Anyway, that just about does it. In true ADHD fashion, I started my first recording of this on a whim with about 15 minutes notice, 
and ended up going from about 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. cooking and starving by the time I finished it because of course I was making my dinner while filming it. Second time around, I started a little bit earlier in the afternoon on a full stomach and we were able to have a lovely dinner of it as well. My wife brilliantly paired this with a really nice Belgian sour beer. This is one of those dishes where you almost give up on silverware pretty quickly and just start using your hands. Again, thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride. It's been a lot of fun to make. I will link to the recipe I found in the description below. And do please like and subscribe. See you next time.